Hello, and welcome to this webinar where we are going to introduce MATLAB. My name is Sean Dovalsky, and I'm an application engineer at MathWorks. Let me first show you what we're going to create today using MATLAB. The first thing we're going to create is a report that will detail all of the work we do. We'll be able to see the visualizations we create, the statistics we do, and the model we create and use to make predictions. We'll also create an application. The application will allow another user or yourself to interactively use your model to make predictions. And if we want to see how trucks did on the highway in 2005, we'll be able to share this application with others who have MATLAB or with those who do not have MATLAB. Before we jump into MATLAB itself, I'd first like to ask, what is MATLAB? The answer to this will depend on who you ask. MATLAB means many things to many people. At its core, MATLAB is a high-level programming language. Built around this programming language is an interactive development environment that makes it possible for you to rapidly prototype your algorithms. MATLAB is mainly used for numerical computations, analysis and visualization of data, algorithm development, and deployment. Let's take a look at MATLAB. This is the MATLAB desktop. We have a command window where we can enter commands. While I've been entering these commands, I have a workspace that is storing these variables. We have a current folder browser which has all of the files available to us in the current directory. And we have tool strips that contain interactive tools. We'll work our way through the various tabs up here throughout this webinar. Now back to the command line. When I created these three variables, A, B, and C, I created them to be scalar values, individual pieces of data. I could instead create A to be an array of data, or a vector of data. And when I recompute C, the operation will be applied to el every element of A. This is actually where MATLAB gets its name from, Matrix Laboratory. MATLAB knows how to implicitly work on arrays of numbers. This makes it good for analyzing arrays of data. Since this is not part of our demo today, I'm going to clear out the workspace and clear the command window to give us a fresh start. Before we jump into our demo, I'd like to first introduce what we at MathWorks call the Technical Computing Workflow. This is a workflow that you will most likely follow regardless of what domain you're in or what products you're using. If you are working with data, you have to get it from somewhere. It could come from files, it could come from databases or streaming applications, other types of software. It could come from hardware directly. Once you get this data into whatever your working environment is, you get to do the fun part. Analyze it, model it, develop algorithms to make predictions. But you're not done yet. You may have to create a report to share the work you've done. Maybe you're taking code and putting it into production, or developing the back end for another application. Now up here, this looks very linear, left to right. But it's not linear. The data may change. The requirements may change. So more of the mundane tasks here that we can automate, such as generating reports, 
the more time we could spend developing our algorithms. So one of the themes today throughout this webinar is going to be automation. Now let's jump into our example. Let's now introduce the example we're going to use today. Today we are going to model how horsepower affects fuel economy in terms of miles per gallon and in terms of CO2 emissions. We're going to get data from Excel, visualize it, create our model, and then we'll create that report that you saw at the beginning, as well as the app that you see on the right here. Now I know many of you are not modeling fuel economy for a living, and the purpose of this demo is not to become fuel economy experts. We've chosen this example because it's something that most people can relate to so that we can show the capabilities of MATLAB for working with data. So throughout this demo, please try and think of the data that we're using as your own data and how you could apply the techniques that we're using to your own work. Let's jump into MATLAB. So we have data that's stored in Excel files for many different years worth of cars. Let's take a look at one of these Excel files outside of MATLAB. So the first row is the column header, a description of what the column is. This is fairly standard for Excel sheets. And then each row is a specific test of a vehicle. And total it looks like we have uh, about 2,600 tests. So let's get this into MATLAB and begin our work. To bring this data into MATLAB, I could use the import data tool on the tool strip, or I could just double click the file. This will pull up the import tool. The import tool has looked at our Excel file and made some decisions about how it thinks we want to bring in the data. And we can change any of these, but it's picked out that the first row is different from all the rest, so it's assuming that that's the variable name. And now we can import it. When I say import, it's going to create 24 new variables, one for each column, in my workspace. We now have all these variables here, and if we want to see how rated horsepower relates to miles per gallon, we can select those two, navigate to the Plots tab, which has all the plots available for those two data points, and see how they relate. So it looks here like as uh, horsepower goes up, fuel economy goes down, and, but it's very, it's very wide. There appears to be a lot of variance at every horsepower. So maybe there's some other things we'll need to take into account, such as whether it's a truck or a car, or whether it's driving on the city or highway. So I was in the import tool here, and I interactively brought in all of these variables. Remember, the key today is automation. We want to automate our entire workflow. So instead of just importing the data, I can generate a script. Let me save it before I forget. And now that we have this script, we can go back, clear the workspace, get rid of all the variables we have, and by simply running this script, we have all those variables back in MATLAB. And if we were curious to see how this works, we could go dig into it and see that it's using a command called XLS read. But we don't really need to look at this script anymore. Now another thing you may notice is that I just ran this script by pressing the run button right here. And this looks like a similar button up here. So I run a lot of files. So I've taken the Run button and added it to my Quick Access Toolbar, which contains all the tools that I use really frequently. So I run a lot of functions. I also run a lot of sections. We'll see what that is in a bit. 
And then I spend a fair amount of time in debug mode, which is why all my debugging tools are up here too. But I'm not debugging right now, so they're inactive. You may also have noticed that three new tabs popped up when this editor file opened. These tabs are dynamic, so they'll change based on what tools I have available or open right now. Close the editor file, and those tabs go away. And we can continue our work at this time with these variables, trying to create our model. But I'm actually going to go back to the import tool. The reason for this is we just imported 24 variables. But we have a lot of data here. If we wanted all of this data to live in MATLAB concurrently, we would have to either come up with a variable naming scheme and then still have to deal with hundreds of variables. And let's say I wanted to extract the second value of all of these variables. Well, that would be a lot of typing. So instead of importing them each as their own variable, I'm going to import them as a table. So a table is a new data type in R2013B. We do two releases per year, an A release and a B release. One comes out sometime in the spring and the other one sometime in the fall. So this, this release came out in early September. So tables were designed to store heterogeneous column data which is what this is. We have a bunch of columns. They're not all the same type. Some of them are, are, are strings. Some are numbers. So we can store all of these in one variable and then work on that variable as a whole at once, like we saw earlier at the beginning. This also means that if we want the data from all of those Excel files to live concurrently in MATLAB, we only need a few tables versus, versus hundreds of variables. Now before I generated a script, this time I'm going to generate a function. Save it. Function is a little different than our script. If we remember our script, it was hardwired. It was going to do the exact same steps every time. So in this case, it was hardwired for 2007. So if we wanted to change the year, we would have to go in and, and manually change this here. A function accepts inputs. So in this case, it accepts a file name and then optionally a sheet name and, and uh, our starting and ending rows. And we can call this function with whatever we want. So our car data will be equal to import the file. And in this case, we want our 2007 data, right? So we need to put in the full file path here. So data XLS 2007. Let's bring in 2004. Okay. So we can bring in 2004, then if we want to bring in 2007, we simply change this to a 7, and now we have our car data for 2007. So now we should have two variables, one for 2004, one for 2007. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and clear out the workspace, clear the command window, and then just rerun the 2007 one and we'll continue our example with just 2007. So if we look at the 2007 data, we can see a similar view to what we saw in Excel. We have the year, we have some of the, the physical uh, properties of the car, and it, once again if we wanted to see how our rated horsepower compares to our miles per gallon, go over to the plots tab and we should see the same plot as before. And we can might want to see how our rated horsepower does against emissions. So how does it do against CO2 emissions? 
and look at a scatter plot for this and see that it appears that the, the more horsepower you have, the more CO2 you emit. Now you can see that it looks like there's a, a fair amount of variance here and it looks like it might even be kind of two separate separate trends. So we need to take a look at some of the other factors that could impact this. And one of those could be city or highway. Is maybe the top curve driving on the highway versus the city or vice versa? So I have this city highway variable in my table and we want to plot against it. But right now it's just strings. It's just the string, the text city or text highway. It's not representing uh, a city or a highway, an actual, an actual category. So what we want to do is convert this to a categorical, also a new data type in our 2013b. What this does is it looks for every unique string in there and groups them together and actually, actually creates categories out of it. So now if we want to see a plot of our rated horsepower versus our miles per gallon and compare city and highway, we can do that and see that some of that variance that we saw can be accounted for by whether the vehicle was driving on the city or the highway. So if it's on the, on the city, apparently the, the miles per gallon is not as good, except for maybe a few vehicles up here. Okay. If we want to compare trucks and cars, we have the truck car data here as well. Convert that to categorical, and then we can plot our rated horsepower versus our miles per gallon against uh, whether it's a car or a truck. Now you may also have noticed that the plotting selection here is different. So these plots are dynamic based on the variables I have selected. So for like just a simple column vector with just numbers, there are a wide range of MATLAB plots available. This will show us all of them. This is a good way to discover plots that you may not have been familiar with. Another thing that's been happening is every time I've done a command here interactively, it's echoed it to the command prompt. So we can see the actual commands, gscatter, categorical, regular scatter. We can see the commands that are being used so we can learn how to use them on their own. Also, if we are curious about how some of these work, we could simply highlight them, right click, and say help on selection. And this will pull up the documentation for one of these functions. This is a standard MATLAB documentation page. You can see for gscatter, there are a bunch of different syntax we can use. We can give it x, y in a group, and then there are a few other options we can give it as well. So now I have all these commands at the command prompt, and I want to rerun all of them. So the entire time I've been working here, I have a command history that's kind of been keeping track of everything I've done. So we can go in here and cherry pick the, the commands that we want to keep and use them to make a script. Save this, call it main. And now we have a script. We can clear out all of the work we've done before and rerun this script, and it'll reproduce everything we saw. Okay? Now, if you're like me and you look at this script right here, there's a lot of, of, of text and it's kind of hard to parse with your eyes. So, one of the things we might want to do is add some comments. So we can add comments by adding a percent sign. Now, rather than having you sit here and watch me type, I'm going to jump over to another script that does roughly the same thing, but is slightly more polished. Let's clear out our workspace and jump over to the main script. So this script is going to look somewhat similar to the one we just created. We're going to import 
data for 2007. But this script has sections in it. A section is created by 2% signs followed by a space. And it allows you to block your code off in sections so that you can run just one section at a time. This means that you don't have to re-import the data every time, for example, if the data was large, or if you don't want to see all of the plots every time you run a script, you can simply skip those sections. So we run this section, it brings our car data into MATLAB, and then if we want to see how to index into our table, we can just run this section. I may not want to run this section every time, so next time I could skip it. So in order to index into a table, to extract elements out of a table, there are a bunch of different ways we can use. These three are all the same. So if we want the first five elements of the MPG variable, we can use dot notation to say car data dot MPG of the first five elements. MPG happens to be the 22nd variable in this table. So we could ask for the first through fifth elements in the 22nd variable. Or we could index into it by its name. Well, it's called MPG. We want rows one through five of the variable called MPG. Okay. If we run this section, we should see the same results returned every time. So this is how we can programmatically access our table. Earlier I introduced tables by saying, what if we wanted the second element of every variable? Well, if we wanted the second element of every variable here, car data of the second row, all variables, and it will return a table that contains the second element of every row. So now I'm going to walk through this script and we can take a look at some of the other things that we can do with tables. There's a, a summary command that allows you to quickly get a summary of, of some of the properties of a table. There's a summary command. So if we want to see just some summary statistics of a table or specific elements in a table, we can ask for the summary. And it'll return, for example, min, median, and max for the, for the variables we asked for. Like before, we can plot the miles per gallon, convert to categorical, and now we have categorical variables. Now to extract the categorical variables, we're going to use a technique called logical indexing. Let's take a look at our car data dot mpg of 1 colon 5. And I'm just going to call this x. So these are the first 5 miles per gallon in x. If I wanted to extract everywhere in x that's greater than 20, there are a few different ways I could do this. Typical programmer from a low-level language would consider using a for loop. If you're used to Excel, you might use an if statement on the column. In MATLAB, we can use what's called logical indexing. So I can create an intermediate variable, idx, which is equal to x greater than 20. And this will return a 1 everywhere where this condition is met, or a true everywhere where this condition is met, and a 0 everywhere else. We can use IDX to do things to X or to extract values. So we could ask for X of IDX, or we could take X of IDX and set it equal to 20, saturating this, this variable X to 20. Now, for this simple example, the benefit of this might not be obvious, but what this allows us to do is index into, into any variable based on any condition that we can ex express as a true or a false. So let's say we wanted car data dot, and I can press tab to give me all of the variables. If we want car data dot manufacturer name of everywhere where the horsepower is greater than 600, 
it'll give us the manufacturer name everywhere where the horsepower is greater than 600. Mercedes, Ferrari, and Lamborghini, I believe it. We could do it alternatively if we wanted everywhere where it was less than 100. You could see that there's two tests that the rated horsepower was less than 100. And if we were curious about, instead of the manufacturer name, the car line, we could see that those were Priuses. So logical indexing is a very powerful way to extract data from a, a table or a matrix. And we're going to use that in order to fit models to just specific parts of our data. So we now have a logical index, car IDs, and we can see it's a logical or a checkbox everywhere where the, the vehicle is a car, everywhere where the vehicle is driving in the city, and whether it was on the highway or not. Now we can examine distributions based on whether the vehicle was in the city or the highway. We can fit distributions to the data, and this allows us to see that the, the city certainly appears to have a lower mean miles per gallon. We can group based on city, highway, and car, and truck using gscatter like we saw before. And this allows us to see even a, a, a more granular view of what we saw before in that trucks on, in the city appear to do the worst, then cars in the city, then trucks on the highway, and cars on the highway. If we wanted to see uh, the effects of, of the engine compression and carbon dioxide, there's another command, gplot matrix, that allows us to see the same plot um, beside horsepower, so we could compare the two. And if we want to calculate some specific statistics on this, we can use varfun to apply some operation to every variable in our table. So if we want to, to group based on city and highway or, and car and truck, we can get our, our, mean, our mean horsepower, our mean miles per gallon based on every one of these properties. We can't necessarily say yet with any statistical backing that the vehicle type has anything to do with the miles per gallon. So one way we could, we could test this would be to use an analysis of variance test to see if the data were, were drawn from the same distribution. Now if you didn't know about the ANOVA capabilities of MATLAB, you could search for ANOVA in the, in the documentation search up here, and this will give you suggestions for things that it thinks you might want. And if we select a specific one, perhaps we're curious about the NY analysis of variance, this will pull up the doc page which shows us how to use ANOVA N. This is a standard MATLAB documentation page. You can see that most functions have multiple syntax you can use. And then the various parameters are all described. And then at the bottom there are usually pretty good examples. That'll tell us whether whether they're statistically different. It appears that, that the probability uh, greater than f is zero, so it appears that they are indeed statistically signif significantly different. Another visualization we could use to get a feel for some of these statistics is a box plot. A box plot shows us a lot of statistics around our data, we can see that it gives us whiskers for the range of the non-outlier data points. The, bot the, the lower and upper blue line are the 25th and 75th percentiles, and the red line is the median. 
there are little notches drawn around the median which indicate that if these notches overlap between the various variables there's a possibility they were drawn from the same distribu distribution. Since the notches here don't appear to overlap, for example, with car on the city and car on the highway, we can see that, that whether it's in the city or highway is statistically significant for cars and for trucks. Now we wanted to create a model so that we could, so that we could fit a uh, line to our data. And since we've seen that the distributions between cars and trucks in the city and highway are statistically different, we need to create a separate model for each one. So I'm going to extract our, our horsepower in the city and our miles per gallon in the city and open up the curve fitting app in order to do curve fit. So apps are standalone applications that you can use to interactively do your work. They come with the various MATLAB toolboxes and there are a lot of them. Of course, I have a full product install, so you can see the full set of, of MATLAB apps here. You can also make your own, and we'll do that in a little while. The one I'm interested in right now is curve fitting. And in the curve fitting app, we can, we can make our fit. So we want to model miles per gallon in the city as a function of rated horsepower. Well, we can see the fit. So by default, it gives us a, a, a line. A line doesn't appear to be a very good fit here. We can see the summary statistics off here on the right. Our R square is 0 0.45, which is not very good. So I could try a different fit. We could maybe try a higher order polynomial, also not a good fit. We could put in a custom equation if we had a custom equation uh, some uh, type of parametric equation for this. We could put that in here. In this case, I'm going to use a power series to fit our model. Uh, the, fir the first order power ser series doesn't fit particularly well, so I'm going to use the second order one. And this gives us a, a fit through our data. So we can see that our R square value here still isn't very good, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to use this fit uh, to make our predictions. So to use the model, we could export it to the workspace directly. Instead, I'm going to generate a function. Many of the MATLAB apps allow you to create functions, which will do the same work that you did interactively. So now I have this create fit function, and we can call this at the command prompt and it'll create the model for us. Now if we are curious how our what our estimated miles per gallon were for a horsepower of 300 we could ask the fit result of 300 apply the model and give us back uh, an estimated miles per gallon of, of almost 17 and a half. If we wanted to know how confident we were in this in this fit uh, we could we could look for the prediction interval of our fit result at 300 and by default it's going to give us the 95 percent confidence so we're, we're 95 percent confident in our prediction that it's between these range if we wanted to increase the confidence we could increase the confidence and see that the range expands a little bit So now I'm going to go back to the script and use the model to make predictions for uh, all four categories, whether it's a car in the city or a truck on the highway. So create MPG fit is essentially the same function we just generated. If we want to see how it works with, with all of our data, we can see that it, it did OK with the entire set of data not delineating based on whether it's in the city or the highway. And if we want to further further delineate this, we can model just the car in the city, just the car in the highway, which in turn will give us four different fits. 
each of which will be tighter around that group of data. And we can see the various figures here for truck in the city, truck on the highway, car in the city, car, car on the highway. Now I have the script here, it's finished. I'm going to, to clear all our, our variables, clear the command prompt. I'm going to close all the figures too. And we can redo all of the work we've done just by running this script. So it'll run, it'll pull in the data, it'll create the models and use them. And since we've been commenting this well and, and using sections with, with good headers, go over to the publish tab and publish this functionality. Now publishing will publish this to a report. It'll run the code, it'll take a snapshot at the end of every section, and then turn those sections into chapters in our finished report. Publishing allows you to use many different types of syntax, So I published this to HTML. We can see the HTML report that we saw at the beginning. Now there are many different file types we can publish to. So I'm going to edit the published configurations here and see that we can publish to HTML, XML, LaTeX directly, um, doc, PowerPoint, and PDF. Okay, and there's a bunch of other settings we can change, but we essentially have a finished report here. So we just did this report for 2007. If we wanted to change it to 2004, we simply change the number right here, and it'll rerun for 2004. Now we have the data for 2004. Now at the beginning, we also took a look at an app that we created for modeling our fuel economy data that allowed us to interactively basically make all the decisions we made in the code. In order to make your own app, you can use a tool called Guide to make your own user interface. This will pull up a blank canvas where you can build your UI. Now pretty much all of the standard user interface controls are available to you here. Push buttons, radio buttons, sliders, etc. By double clicking on any of these we can change pretty much any property we want of it. Okay. When we save this, Guide is going to generate a framework for me to put in the code. So it's going to take care of kind of all of the overhead, and all I have to do is paste in what I want that push button to do right here. Now I'm going to open the full UI in Guide so you can see what it looks like. and we can see all of the various push buttons and checkboxes that have been added. The code for this UI is contained in, in the MATLAB file with the same name and when we run this MATLAB file it gives us the tool that we saw at the beginning. Now right now this fuel economy app depends on all of those other files that we saw, import year XLS, model MPG. So if we wanted to give it to somebody else, we'd have to give them all of those files. Alternatively, we could package it as an app. This is an app packaging tool that essentially allows us to add the main file, and then it'll do the dependency analysis to find every other file that's required and allow us to build our app. 
We can fill in everything else we want and package our app. This has created a single file, Fuel Economy Analysis, that I can give to any one of you and you can run from within MATLAB, from your Apps tab. Now if I wanted to give this application to somebody who did not have MATLAB, I could use the application compiler to build a standalone application. When I package this, it's going to create a standalone executable. The packaging has completed, and now we can run our executable outside of MATLAB. MATLAB's closed, and I can still run this app. I'd now like to summarize what we've done. We've automated our entire workflow. We've gotten data from files. We've modeled it used the model to make predictions, and then taken this and packaged it into a report. All of this is automated. If the files change, we simply change the file name or directory name, and we push a button and get our report with the new file. To do this today, we used MATLAB, the statistics toolbox for some of the statistics functionality that you saw, and the curve fitting toolbox for the curve fitting application. MATLAB can access data from many different file types, Excel, text, binary, pretty much any standard image, audio, video, file format, and many of the scientific formats like HDF5 or NetCDF. MATLAB can talk to many other programming languages directly and to databases via the database toolbox. In order for MATLAB to talk to hardware, you can use the data acquisition toolbox to talk to data acquisition devices or the instrument control toolbox to talk to standalone instruments such as oscilloscopes. Built into MATLAB are many engineering functions. You saw some of them today. There are also extensive ca plotting capabilities. You saw some of the 2D plotting capabilities today, but there's also 3D and then volumetric visualization like for CT scans or, or, or other three-dimensional images. MathWorks has over 85 products. We have products for many of the, of the domain areas, signal processing, image processing, finance, etc. And we have partner products that provide some of the very niche applications that we don't have toolboxes for. With MATLAB, you can automatically generate reports from your MATLAB files by publishing them. We saw that today. We also have the report generator, which allows you to customize style sheets and make much more custom reports. You can package your code into an application and then deploy this application to others uh, as an executable or as a shared library. Let's go over how that process works. When you give your MATLAB code to other people who have MATLAB, they can accept just MATLAB apps or MATLAB files. When you want to share with those who do not have MATLAB, use the MATLAB compiler to build a standalone executable or shared library. If you want to build a, an add-in or a software component for another environment, we have the Builder EX for Excel, Builder JA for Java, and Builder NE for .NET. These allow you to build components for these. All of this can be shared royalty-free. Let's go over the workflow for sharing an application with another user. You take MATLAB and develop your algorithm. 
build an application, use the MATLAB compiler to c compile this application, give it to the end user who can then download the MATLAB compiler runtime or MCR from the web. They can then run your executable which is running against the MCR. So let's summarize the content from this webinar today. MATLAB is a high-level language. It has built-in support for many of the math and, and engineering functionality as well as matrix and vector operations directly. There's an interactive development environment that allows you to rapidly prototype your algorithm and interactively explore your data. MATLAB serves as a technical computing platform for many different domain areas from signal and video processing to bioinformatics to finance. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar today and that you've learned a few things about MATLAB. 